This is lecture 9F on the solution of two mixing problems for calculus 2. We're going to solve uh, that case 1 where the volume was constant. And here was the differential equation right here. Now let's solve it by using an integrating factor. First we have to put it in standard form. I'm going to write again for you the standard form in, for an integrating factor. Let's say dy by dt plus some function. Sometimes we use p's and q's. So that's good enough. Okay, or we use a and b. Then, using this value right here, which in that in case is this, 5.05, we develop the integrating factor, and the integrating factor equals, I should have used a and b. I know sometimes I use p and q, but I'm using a and b. Okay, that's it, I'm going to erase that. Okay, let me write this in standard form using a's and b's. So a of t times y equals b of t. In this case, the coefficient of a this of y is a is just a constant, 0 0.05. And the b is okay, 30. Also a constant. What is the integrating factor? Remember, an integrating factor equals e to the minus, ah, I always want to do that, e to the integral of a of t dt. So in this case, it's going to be e, I'm integrating 0 0.005, a constant, times dt. You can carry out the integration, and you get e to the 0 0.005t, which is what we see right here. Here's the solution, y equals e to the minus 0 0.05t, fine, times the integral of 30 times e to the 0 0.05t dt. 30 is a constant, can come out from under the integ integral sign. Um, you're left with just the integral of e to the point 0 0.005t dt, and that's equal to 1 over 0 0.005 e to the point 0.005t plus some constant c. And that's what we see right here. The 30 is from the, uh, um, the b term, which was a constant right over here. Okay. Now we go ahead and multiply through by this leading term. And this is our solution. This is the general solution because we have still have the constant of integration and it hasn't been evaluated yet. So I repeated over here the general solution still has this constant. I want to evaluate the constant. So let's say I know the initial amount in the tank. So y at 0 equals 28,000. So 20,000 equals 6,000 plus c because e to the minus 0 is 1. I can solve for c and c is 22,000. Right. Here is this particular solution y equals 6,000 plus 22,000 e to the minus 0 0.05 t. Right. Now you've seen this form a zillion and a half times and you recognize it, hopefully. You have this term which is your steady state or equilibrium value and you have a decaying exponential, and that decaying exponential is your transient. Right. But this now gives me the, um, the amount of substance that's in the tank or the room as a function of time. Okay. If you want the concentration in the room or in the tank, just take this y of t right here and divide by 2,000 because that's the volume. So what you're just doing is taking Oh, that's a pen. What you're doing is taking the amount of substance, dividing by the what's in the tank, the volume in the tank, and that will give me a concentration. And here are the graphs of these solutions. This is a mixing problem. You have a 2,000 uh, liter tank volume is constant because the input and the output uh, flow rates are equal. 
so there's no extra volume being added or taken away from the from the volume in, that's already in the tank. Now we have an equilibrium solution of 6,000 kilograms. Uh, okay, this just has a different scale to it, and I didn't both scales didn't make it onto the slide. Sorry about that. So the equilibrium kilogram, the six th equilibrium solution, steady state solution is 6,000 kilograms. It starts off higher, you start with 28, and it decreases down to the 6,000. All right. The equilibrium steady state in terms of concentration is 3 kilograms per liter. The only difference between these two is the division by the constant volume of 2,000. Now let's look for the solution of case two. In this case, the volume in the tank is not constant. You might want to pay a little bit of attention here to the integrating factor since it might happen to show up somewhere else. Okay, so I want to solve this by using the integrating factor. I put it in the com in the standard form, and this was supposed to be 30. I see it turned into 30 here like it was supposed to over here. Okay, dy by dt, you need the first derivative isolated, plus some function of t. Here's the form we were after, dy by dt plus a of t times y equals b of t. In this case, b of t is just a constant 30, but a is a function of t. It's 8 divided by 2,000 plus 2t. That's a. Now from a, I want to develop an integrating factor. The integrating factor is e raised to the integral of a dt. All right. In, in the examples we did for our CNRL circuits and the example we did here previously, this A was a constant and it was very easy to evaluate. Now it's not a constant, but you can still carry out the integrating, the um, yeah, integration. So I'm going to carry out that integration uh, just independent of the exponent. So if I integrate 8 divided by 2,000 plus 2t dt, the answer is a natural log. 8 times 1 half, that's from the, you can use, get that by substitution here, times the natural log of 2,000 plus 2t. So that's 4 times the natural log of 2,000 plus 2t, or I could say natural log of 2,000 plus 2t raised to the fourth power. Right. All this appears in the exponent. Well, e raised to the natural log, those are inverses of each other, and the answer is 2,000 plus 2t raised to the fourth. That is the integrating factor. So this is the first example of an integrating factor that was not exponential. You see, once we carried out the the um, integration and then looked at it in terms of as being an exponent, the exponentiation went away. We can still use this um, non-exponential integrating factor to solve the equation. We end up with 2,000 plus 2t raised to the fourth y of t. That's a derivative. Remember, it came from a product on this side when you work through the, this side. equals 30 times the same factor. Here's the integrating factor. Here's the integrating factor. Now when I integrate, then I can um, integrate this side, this side, uh, and multiply. Okay, on this side, I get 2,000. You don't have to know this for the test. It's just the integrating factor part. e to the fourth times y. And I'm integrating this. I will get a 30. Boy, that thing doesn't like staying at 30, does it? I get 30. OK. So I integrate this side. I'm integrating this side. The 30 comes out in front. I've got this raised to the fourth power. Obviously, you had. It's a one half. You can do this by inspection, and I've got 2,000 plus 2t to the fifth divided by five. Ooh, I see. Right, it should be a three because two times five is 10. 30 divided by 10 gives me a three. Right. Now I'm going to multiply both sides. I have it in this shape. I'm going down here so I can do something with it. So I've got 2,000 plus 2t raised to the fourth power times y, and I want y separated out by itself, and I have 3, 2,000 plus 2t raised to the fifth plus some constant c. 
So if I multiply both sides by 2,000 plus 2t to the minus fourth, multiply this side by it and end up with just y of t, t. And when I multiply over here, you see one of this, it's going to be minus four plus five, so that's going to leave one over here. So I've got three, an exponent of one, two t. That's because I'm multiplying this side by the same 2,000 plus 2t raised to the minus 4, and I have that constant of integration times 2,000 plus 2t raised to the minus 4th. General solution, I need to evaluate c for the particular solution. If at time t0, y0 is equal to 28,000, say, all right, I can use that to solve for c and find out what c is. Let's see, let's look complicated. So here's the solution with C evaluated. It's right here. Okay, looks a little different than the others with all the exponents around, but that's what it looks like. Okay, for the concentration of the tank, divide the divide by the tank volume, and here's the tank volume. So the concentration changes with time, and we have what do we see for concentration changing with time? We see the usual steady state volume, and here is or more of a transient, the transient part of the solution. Remember that the tank volume is increasing in this problem. So here's a graph of the solution. This is time. And, okay, actually, this is scaled wrong. Um, no, it's not. For the amount, this is really 28,000. Concentration in blue pertains to the scale without any thousand onto it. So start at 28,000 for the amount in the tank. You see initially it decreased, and then the amount starts increasing again, but slowly. Remember, the volume of the tank is increasing, so the total amount in the tank also is increasing because the concentration, started right here, is leveling off at 3 kilograms per liter. It doesn't level off at it, of course, it's, it's uh, approaching it. Okay, so that was the solution uh, for, for these mixing problems. Okay, the whole idea is the setup is the hardest part. We're using Y for the amount of substance in the tank, something in kilograms or some unit of, of um, mass. And we say the rate of change of that equals what's coming in through the input minus what's going out through the output. That sort of makes sense. And there was some thinking in there where we had to say the output concentration was equal to the input concentration, and that's why the y ended up in, on the other side of the equation, and it's not simply an a problem of integrating the, the result. So the setup here is a little tricky, um, but once you get the setup, there's a whole bunch of very interesting problems that you can do.